everyone. Welcome to researchmd.com. We are going to today, and we're going to start our board review preparation. Um, we're going to pick infection disease, and we're going to go through some of the concept, which is usually taken from some of the common board review uh, preparations like Mixab, UWord, Ambrose, things like that. These are high yield concepts. Before you take the board, everyone should know that. Let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Pramil Charyat. I'm a physician, program director, internal medicine residency, transitional residency, and I teach medical students on a regular basis, on associate professor of medicine to a large medical school. Okay, so the way we're going to uh, the way we uh, <clears throat> the way we made these questions. First, we're going to start with the clinical vignette. Okay, and then we're going to do some. Um, we're going to go through some of the scenario. What kind of questions you can expect? All right. So let's look at it right here. What happens? You got an 80 year old female with a past medical history of cancer, getting chemotherapy, coming in. Um, patient already getting IV penicillin for an osteomyelitis situation, and then now she's come, she's already on antibiotic with the penicillin. Now she's complaining about fever chills for three days. Okay, remember the word is, the patient is on chemotherapy, got a central line, got IV <clears throat> antibiotics going in, still having fever chills. So we need to think, what, what are the things we have to think about it, okay? There is an infection going on. That's what like. Now let's look at the labs. When we look at the labs, we got a white count elevated, blood pressure dropping down. There is fever, heart rate is up. There is metabolic acidosis. There is renal failure, so multi system involved with sepsis. And the blood culture came back, budding yeast or candida. Okay, now, so the question is like, it's about central line. I want to underline this. This patient is on have an infection, when, when a patient always comes to a hospital infection, what's the first thing we do? You make sure there's nothing, you know, you examine from top to bottom. You have to look, is there any lines and all that. This patient is immunocompromised, already getting antibiotic, have a center line, look septic. What should we do? What questions we can expect? Okay, number one, the first thing you have to do, the question is like, are we going to remove the catheter or not? Of course, you have to remove the catheter, okay? The most common wrong answer is people say, <laughs> don't remove the catheter and treat with antibiotic. No, you remove the catheter and also treat with antibiotic, okay? The second thing is this patient got budding yeast, candida, right? People, when you say yeast, people automatically think what? It's contamination. So that's the most common wrong answer, okay? This patient is immunocompromised. The blood culture came back, budding is, so it's not a contamination. Take it very seriously, you have to treat. So how do you treat? First, you treat with the IV caspo function. That's the first line treatment, okay? The second line is you can liposome a lamprotrosin B. It's the second line of treatment. But don't pick proconosol. We are all familiar with the proconosol, right? So whatsoever your initial reaction is like, oh, let's go give proconosol. But Glucosol does not cover all the strains, okay? But remember that. Now the situation is going to change. I'm going to change this. Instead of budding yeast, I'm going to say it came back like gram-positive, okay? So what do you have to cover? First line, you can give vancomycin, and then you can give daptomycin as the second line to kill all the gram-positive organism. Now I'm going to change the scenario to something else. So let's say we come back gram-negative organism, always try like cefepin. And uh, let's say I'm gonna change this and it come back all multi-MDRD, multi-drug resistant organism. How do you treat it? You treat with the carbapenem, okay? So the, let's look at the most common answers, people, uh, most common wrong answers people usually pick one. Keep the catheter, that is wrong, you have to take it out. Number two, guide wire to replace, okay? So you you know there is a central line infection, you think you can remove the catheter, put the uh, guide wire and put another one next to it, uh, on top of that. So it's not going to work. Don't use a guide wire, that's the common wrong answer. And then wait for identification, right? You know the culture, let's wait for the identification of the bacteria, whichever, like Klebsiella or whatever, don't do that. You start antibiotic right away, okay? Now, let's look at the prevention. There's one more question, like it's very important, it's very it's becoming very common in the United States, okay? 
you have to give daily chlorhexidine bath to this patient, especially in the ICU. That will, studies have shown, it will prevent catheter-associated um, bloodstream infection. Okay, so that's another question right there, daily chlorhexidine. You also, people can ask, the other question is about the hand wash. They can ask about the guide wire. Okay, so let's look at one more thing right here. We, I mean, you know, definition CRBSI, okay, that's a catheter related bloodstream infection. And then you got this one is CLABC, C L A B S I, cat central line associated bloodstream infection. We got a central line and you got an associated infection right here. So this is actually CLABC, don't get confused. When you say CRBSI, it's like any kind of catheter, it could be like a urinary catheter, you can have an infection, right? Now, so what are the most common organisms in the central line? We're talking again, CLABC, central line associated bloodstream infection, coagulus negative staph, staph aureus, andropoca, candida, Klebsiella, E. coli, enterobacter, and pseudomonas. These are the most common organisms you will find in CLABC, okay? Now, what are the situations you have to remove? Most of the situations you have to remove the catheter, like if there's severe suspect, severe sepsis, separative thrombophlebitis, endocarditis, persistent bloodstream infection, more than 72 hours after antibiotic therapy, persistent bloodstream infection, and hemodynamic instability, microbiology, any of the staph aureus, pseudomonas, candida, mycobacterium, in this situation, you have to remove the catheter. Okay, so let's, uh, the main thing again, first thing, remove the catheter, make sure you treat right away. Um, and if it is, uh, in this patient, it's uh, IV caspofungin, don't pick fluconazole, it doesn't cover all the strain. If it is gram positive, vancomycin, second line is daptomycin. And if it is gram negative, you know, you can always use cefepim. If it is MDRD, what do you use? Carbapenem, okay? And make sure when you, the prevention is also very, very important. The question is gonna come on uh, prevention. How do you prevent it? Daily chlorhexidine and make sure you hand wash and do not use guide wire to replace the catheter, okay? Thank you so much for joining us today. God bless.